Welcome to the By Design Radio Program. My name is Dr. James Prudian of Prudian Healthcare and PrudianHealthcare.com, where health literacy is the key to longevity. And as long as God has us on this side of eternity, my show is designed to help educate you and your families to feel better, function better, and live as many quality, disease-free years as possible. Thanks for joining me this week, and I hope everyone had a blessed week. Um, as we pick up in show number nine on pain, um, we've been discussing the discussing the ins and outs of pain um i don't know how many weeks i'm going to do i'm on nine it's probably going to take me around a dozen shows to get all the information that i wanted to uh give you guys in uh luke 137 for with god nothing is impossible this show is uh written and has been uh designed to allow you guys hopefully a better knowledge of uh, and a better education to become more literate of God's design of the miracle of life called us and how all of these amazing systems work in one harmonious nature uh, to give us life from our digestive system, our immune system, reproductive system, neurological system, musculoskeletal system, systems working in one harmonious union to provide us life. And the show is designed to bring to light the fact that chronic illness illness is the primary cause of uh, the cost of healthcare in our country, and the, most of it is man-made. So we've done a pretty poor job of following God's design. So the show has uh, been set up to hopefully get us all refocused on God's design. So we started the year off with everybody buying a health journal, and hopefully you've been writing things down because the show is cumulative and we want to keep on track. As we've gone through the subject matter of pain, we broke out the fact that it was a biblical source. Pain is right there in Genesis, uh, right at the fall of man. It was promised us by God. And from the perspective of knowing that we're going to have pain in our lifetime, this uh, series of shows is designed, it has been designed to help us understand that from a food perspective, that food is medicinal and food carries with it. Um, either inflammatory properties or anti-inflammatory properties. And we broke down the literal aspect of why eating an anti-inflammatory diet is, is critical and that 90% of the American food budget is spent on inflammatory food. And the fact that inflammatory food um, is a primary cause of so much of the chronic illness that we're suffering with. Again, that's that's man's food. So then we moved on. We, we, we took a look at psychological stress and its impact on pain. Uh, we talked about the symptoms of stress, some of the hormonal uh, symptoms of stress, how stress affects our hormonal system. And just as a side note, this past week, um, I got my hands on um, a study that, you know, again, this is not new, um, high levels of long-term stress linked to um, a twofold increase in the risk of infertility. You know, for many years, uh, doctors like myself and practitioners, uh, we know that in the, one of the primary causes of infertility is knowing the fact or the impact that stress has on the human body and the fact that the body is so smart in its design that it it has a hard time uh, creating life in a stressful environment. So many times looking at stress as a precursor to infertility, it's a very interesting study. If you want a copy of it, I'll, I'll send it to you. Uh, feel free to go to prudyandhealthcare.com. You could submit a question to me or give me a call. Um, uh, the, uh, it's very important that whether I'm blogging or whatever information I'm dispensing on the, the By Design radio show, um, is backed up with obviously the science behind what we know. So stress and its impact on pain, uh, very important. Then we talked about as we got into autoimmune disease, we took a couple of weeks and really took apart autoimmune disease and how autoimmune is one as a, a, a sixty to seventy different conditions that that make up the autoimmune. Uh, uh, diseases and how much pain they cause the human body. Where we left off last week, we did um, a show on mechanical distortion and we started the whole physical pain conversation. I ended the show with you guys, uh, as you take away, understanding the role of moist heat and massage for some physical pain that we could be having. Taking a hot shower when we get up in the morning, taking a hot shower before we go to bed at night, using moist heat 
packs from time to time are a very good thing. Not a big fan of the dry heat packs that like our grandparents plugged into the walls or our parents plugged into the wall. Um, moist heat is the kind of heat that we should be using. Um, and of course, massage and massage therapy being such a wonderful modality used in clinical practice like myself um, for musculoskeletal pain. So we started the conversation on the physical side and that's where we're going to now kind of get into. And I wanted to start today's show with something that happened to me this week. It, uh, we're having, my wife and I are having our basement painted and um, we have a, you know, full size basement. Uh, we have five children. So the basement is a very important place in my home. And, um, I've known the, the painter that we've used. He's a patient of mine, and I've used him for years. But, you know, something dawned on me. Um, maybe you, I'm 48 years old, and I've renovated the building that I own where my practice is. My wife and I renovated the house that we live in. And as you go through uh, electricians and plumbers and carpenters, you, you realize that not just the tradespeople, but even the people who cut our hair, or our massage therapist, our um, acupuncturist, our doctors, our lawyers, the accountants that we use, all of the tradespeople that we have in our life, we build up good relationships with them. And it takes some time. Sometimes we hire the wrong people. I know I certainly have, you know, hired the wrong electrician or plumber or painter, and then you have to go find somebody. But once you establish that relationship, it's really remarkable how much trust and faith we have in the people who we, we who are service people. I like to think as, my, as myself as one of those people to my patients. And uh, the painter came over to give us the estimate back to the, the basement story. And he, he said, you know, to my wife, Stacy, I'll send over an estimate. And Stacy said, why? <laughs> We're going to hire you anyway. We trust you. Just paint the basement. And when she told me this, I kind of laughed. I said, isn't it a great place that you get to in life when you get there where you find really good people that you don't have to worry about them taking advantage of you and understanding that they're there and they're going to do their job. They're going to be on time. They're going to provide a service. And anyway, what I'm getting to is as we talk about pain, remember guys, you get to choose the people in your life to help you. So the more literate you are in a subject matter, just like I get to choose the painter for my house, you get to choose the doctors and therapists in your life if you're struggling with pain, if you're struggling with autoimmune or you want to learn more about how stress impacts our hormonal system or the thing we talked about with silent inflammation. Or like today, when we take a look at the, the human musculoskeletal system and this this miracle of life that God gave us, um, he provided us this neuromusculoskeletal system. And so as we choose people to treat our pain, the more knowledgeable and literate you are, just like you are with an electrician or a carpenter or a plumber or a painter, your doctors are the same way. So I work very closely with some people in my area, neurosurgeons and orthopedic surgeons and pain management doctors and physiatrists and OBGYN doctors and internal medicine, and I trust them that when I send a patient to them or they send a patient to me, there's this this knowledge of trust that we're going to do the right thing for one another in taking care of that patient. And it takes many years in clinical practice to find the right doctors to refer to so you build that relationship up. So the purpose of the last few minutes of me going off on this tangent is it's very important that the relationships that you have in your life with the people who take care of you, you're comfortable with. A lot of you gals out there have these amazing relationships with your hairdressers, the people who cut your hair. And I've seen women like the hairdresser will retire or move out of the area. And oh my goodness, I have to find a new relationship, you know? So as you find doctors who are going to treat the musculoskeletal system, which consists of your skeleton and the muscles and the tendons and the ligaments and the joints and the bursa, the disc that separates the each one of the vertebrae in your back. These are very pain sensitive structures. Bone is extremely pain sensitive. That's why when a patient has arthritis, it's very painful. Myalgia or muscle pain, a torn ligament, for instance, or tendinitis or inflammation of a tendon, a ruptured disc, a bulging disc, a herniated disc. These types of um, these types of problems create a great deal of pain in the human body. So they are not 
meant to be taken lightly. And I, you know, I always coach people that don't be your own doctor. Don't just passively say, ah, oh, it's going to go away or I'll take some over the counter medication. You know, when you have pain, that's not going away or you have to routinely use over-the-counter medication to treat the symptoms or if you have pain that is radiating down an arm or a leg and it feels like electricity okay these are the types of conditions you want to seek professional help with and you want to find the right people who are going to listen to you who are going to do the right radiological testing like MRI x-ray CAT scan or what have you they're open to using both conservative and non-conservative methodology. So for instance, conservative treatment could include chiropractic care, acupuncture, massage therapy. And if we have uh, a physical therapy, just to finish up, you know, those are primary things that I use as conservative care, but understanding that medicine, pain management, and surgery has a very important role as one unit in the management of pain. Okay, so I'm I'm like tired after saying all of those different modalities and here you are a patient having to have, what do I do? Do I go to a physical therapist? Do I see an acupuncturist? Do I go to a massage therapist? Do I need surgery? And this is not the type of thing where if you're not in the field that you should be making these decisions. So that goes back to hiring the painter. We want to get the right quarterback in our life, the person who understands neuromusculoskeletal pain. What is sciatica? Is it really sciatica? Is it coming from a disc herniation or is it coming from a muscular entrapment? And if it's coming from a muscular entrapment versus a disc herniation, the treatment is very, very different. So I my OCD nature is I can't help it that no matter what project we're going to go do, whether it be in this case pain, let's find you the right team of people or the right point person to first diagnose you. Okay. So in saying that, our skeletal system, right, which are the bones of our body, all right, which again are very, very pain sensitive. This provides structure and framework to our body. Then we have the muscular system, which is basically meat slapped on to the skeletal system. And there's three types of muscle in your body, cardiac muscle, skeletal muscle, and smooth muscle. For the purposes of today's conversation, we're talking about skeletal muscle. You know, cardiac muscle is obviously related specifically to your heart, and it's a different type of muscle if you looked at it under a microscope. So the skeletal muscle is the stuff that everybody grab their bicep, or you could feel your hamstring muscle or your quadricep muscle. The muscles of the body uh, connect our uh, from bone to bone. So what ends up happening is a bone has to be connected to the other bone to create motion. So tendon is the thing between the muscle and the bone. So the muscle will turn into tendon, which connects into the bone. Tendon are strong, okay, typically white in nature. They're not red like the muscle is. And tendonitis can be caused by overuse syndromes, which cause inflammation to the tendon. Joints are the things that are created when bone comes close to bone. Bone should never touch bone in the human body to allow movement. So joints are are structures in the body that connect individual bones, but allow those bones to move against one another. Okay. So that's what the, the joint does. The ligaments connect the bone to the bone. So in other words, ligaments are very short, they're very strong, and ligaments allow the the joint to form. They make up the actual joint. So as we put the human body together and God designed us and he's got this human body, he also created these things called discs. And the discs separate one vertebrae from another. They basically lie adjacent between the vertebrae and the spine. Each disc um, allows movement between vertebrae to vertebrae. And so they they act as a structure that's very, very important. The disc is made up of two different parts. The outside is called the annulus fibrosis and the inside is called the nucleus propulsus. And the annulus is strong. Think of the annulus as the dough of a jelly donut. And think of the nucleus as the inside part of the jelly donut. So the disc could actually shift. So with trauma, sometimes you hear about people having a herniated disc or a bulging disc. That's when the nucleus actually moves and it could press up 
against nerve tissue. In the lower back, the nerve tissue that it presses up against is the sciatic nerve, which is the biggest, thickest nerve in the human body. And those of you who have had sciatic pain, you know how painful that is. The discs also do something else, and that's they degenerate. They, they wear out. And before the age of 40 years old, approximately 25% of people show evidence of disc degeneration on x-ray, for instance. Beyond the age of 40, it, sh it shoots up to 60% of people have intervertebral disc degeneration. And if you've ever wondered why grandma is three or four inches shorter than she used to be, it's because as the discs degenerate, okay, we get shorter. So aging causes degeneration along with a bunch of other things, and it causes us to get a little bit shorter. So intervertebral disc degeneration is something that is very common. We see it in practice all the time in the cervical spine, that's your neck, your mid back, that's your thoracic spine, and in your lumbar spine. So as we end today's show, now that you know the structures of what God created us, the miracle of life, we're now going to go and we're going to take care of the structure by using things like chiropractic care, acupuncture, massage therapy, um, physical therapy, okay, heat, the moist heat like I told you about at home, doing some private massage is also wonderful. And in times we need medication, there's a, there's a need for medication, surgery and procedures. And to navigate through that, my, the, we're going to end the show with you finding the right practitioner who can help you navigate through the diagnosis and treatment of musculoskeletal pain. Okay, guys. Well, thank you for joining me this week, Dr. James Prudian, for another episode of the By Design Radio Program. It's a, it's an honor and it's a blessing to speak to you each week on Tandem Radio and the Bridge FM. If you have any questions for me, please submit them at prudianhealthcare.com. Have a blessed week and God bless you.